Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Tidal Blades Heroes of the Reef. This is a 1-4 to four player dice rolling worker placement fantasy game. In the islands of Naviri, it has been 15 years since the great battle and creation of the Fold. The Fold is a barrier beyond the outer reef to keep monsters from attacking the islands. 15 years ago was also the last assemblage of the Tidal Blades, ultimate warriors and protectors of the islands. During the creation of the Fold, all but one Tidal Blade was lost. So now, 15 years later, monsters are ripping through the Fold and attacking the islands. So a four-day tournament has been called to resurrect the Tidal Blades. You're going to be taking the role of one of the contestants in the tournament. You will be taking actions throughout the islands, completing challenges, utilizing market, stunt, and goals, and fighting monsters, trying to become champion and leader of the Tidal Blades. How do you become champion and leader of the Tidal Blades and win the game? By having the most points at the end of four rounds. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in Tidal Blades Heroes of the Reef. Now let's take a look at the components. Some of the components you see here are from the deluxe edition of the game. The champion board. There are certain actions, challenges, and monsters that allow you to go up the champion board. At the end of the game, you will get points based on your location on this track, whether you're first, second, or third on the track, and you'll get points for leading at the end of each round. The five island boards. These are the locations where you'll be taking your actions. There are two types of circles that you see in the middle of these island boards that represent action types. The solid white filled in circle is a single use action space per round, and the dotted line circles are multi use per round. So all players can go there as many times as they wish per round. Dice. You have level one novice dice, which are the white dice, level two initiate dice, which are blue and red, level three elite dice, which are black and blue, or black and red, and then level 4 guild dice, which are black dice. Monster invasion die, which is used during the night phase at the fold. Danger dice, in white, yellow, and orange. Round 1 you'll use the white, round 2 and 3 you'll use the yellow, and then round 4 you'll use the orange. Monster cards, these are the monsters that you fight at the fold. Challenge cards, you start with a certain number of challenge cards, and then you can gain more at the Citadel. You may attempt to complete a challenge at the arena where you are located. Stunt cards. These are located at the Chronoseum, and they can be used at any point during your turn. Market cards. These are located at Droska Ring. Special announcement cards. These are cards that are used in the advanced version of the game. These are goals given by the judge. The Judge and Last Title Blade. He will be located at one of the three arenas, and if you complete a challenge where he is located, you will go up on the champion board one point. Boat. This will move around Lamera Stadium. First Player Marker. Round Marker. This is used to keep track of the round at the Citadel. Shells. Fruit. Chronoseum Dice Tray. In each of the characters, you have a character board. The character board has four dials, Focus, Spirit, Resilience, and Synergy. Focus allows you to roll more dice when attempting a challenge or fighting a monster. Spirit increases the effectiveness of stunt cards. Resilience allows you to refresh and upgrade more dice in between rounds. Synergy is your character's inner strength and allows you to gain character cards. Your locations on the four traits also give you points at the end of the game. At the bottom of your character board are where you're going to store your active and used dice. And then under the bottom of the player board, you will store your completed challenges. You will place them under the matching location. As soon as you complete a set from the three different locations, you would gain two on the champion board. Character standees or miniatures. Character bus. These are deluxe components to mark your location on the champion board. Action discs. Hit tokens. Character cards. Starting challenge cards, secret goal cards, player reference cards, score pad. For the solo game, you have plot effects cards, rival action disc, and the solo board. The art or lore book, the almanac, and finally your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. 
We're going to be setting this up for a three-player game, which takes 10 steps. Step one, set up the city of Naviri. We're going to place the island boards in the middle of the play area, along with the champion board. You'll place the Citadel of Time board in the center with the compass side up. The other side is used for the advanced version of the game. Then you'll place the champion board above the Citadel of Time, leaving room for a row of challenge cards. In the top left, you'll place the fold, and then going counterclockwise, you'll place the Droska Ring, the Lamera Stadium, and Chronoseum. A diagram of how they are placed is located on the back of each of the island boards. Step two, place supply pools. You're gonna separate your dice and place your dice next to the island boards, and then you're gonna place your shells and fruit next to your dice. Step three, place the judge. Choose an island to place the judge. You will choose between the Droska Ring, Lamera Stadium, and the Chronoseum. Step four, set up the fold. Separate the monster cards into easy and hard. If it is your first game, you will remove the advanced monsters, which have the flame symbol. Then you will shuffle the three hard monsters and place them on the fold. And then take the three easy monsters, shuffle them, and place them on top of the hard monsters. Then you will reveal the topmost monster. On each of the monster cards, on the left side, you have the fighting style weakness and the name, the reward if you have a hit token on the monster card, an invasion effect if you do not have a hit token on the monster card when it invades the islands. On the right side, you have the types of hits that it's going to take to kill the monster. The results with the champion symbol above them would give you a champion point when placing your hit token on that result. These are called armored spots and require a higher level of dice. Then in the bottom right, you have a kill bonus if you are the player that places the final hit token. And then place the monster invasion die on the fold. Step five, set up the citadel. Separate the challenge cards. The legendary challenges are used in the advanced game. Then you will shuffle the regular challenge cards face down and place them on the citadel. Then you will reveal the first five above the citadel creating the challenge pool. Then you will place the danger die on their indicated locations next to the rounds. One is the white challenge die, two is yellow, and then four is orange. Then place the round marker on one. Step six, set up the chronoseum. Shuffle and place the stunt cards face down. Step seven, set up Lamera Stadium. Place the boat on the start space or the question mark location. Step eight, set up Droska Ring. You will shuffle and place the market cards. You will remove the advanced market cards for your first game, which are the market cards that have the flame at the bottom. Then shuffle the remaining market cards, place them face down next to the Droska Ring, and draw three face up. Step nine, get player components. Choose a character and get the corresponding character board, character, action discs, hit tokens, secret goal cards, for your first game, you are going to use the secret goal card that has the compass on it. And if it's not your first game, you would randomly choose one and return the remaining to the box. Character cards, story card, starting challenge cards, two fruit and four shells, two novice or level one white dice. Step 10, place player components and choose the first player. Place your character board in the center of your player area, place two action discs under your character, and then one under round two, and one under round four at the Citadel. Place your shell shield card from your character cards next to your board with two shells on it. This shell shield card allows you to move shells onto the card to absorb damage from the danger die. Then you can spend shells from the shield to change die faces or refresh dice. You will choose a first player and give them the first player marker. So for this game, Dust will be our first player. Then you will choose your starting character card. If it's your first game, it's suggested to use the character card that has the compass on it. If not, you would shuffle your character cards, draw three, and then choose one. Set all the dials on your character board to the green start position. Place your dice on the active dice area on your character board. Place a hit token or your character bust on the champion board at the start space. And then based on player order, gain additional resources. The second player would gain a fruit, the third player would gain a shell, and a fourth player would gain a fruit and a shell. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. The tournament to crown the leader of the title blades and champion is over four days or rounds. A round consists of a day and a night phase representing one day of the tournament. Now let's look at each of those phases that make up a round. 
the day phase. In clockwise order, players will take four steps. Step one, moving their character and an action disc to an island in an action spot. Step two, take the action spot reward. This is the depicted reward in the circle. Step three, take the island bonus effect. And then step four, optionally play a challenge card. If it matches the island, you are located. The island bonus effects. In the fold, you would fight the monster at your chosen space. For the Citadel, you would draw or choose two challenge cards. You would choose from the face up or draw from the deck. Keep in mind that it will refill each time, so you could choose one, refill, and then choose or draw for the second. Also keep in mind that there are no max for the number of challenge cards that you can have. For the Droska Ring, you would buy a market card or gain one fruit. For Lamira Stadium, you would move the boat forward one space and gain the reward. For the Coronaceum, you would draw a stunt card. You can use a stunt card during your turn now or any of your future turns. These are one-time use. when choosing to optionally attempt a challenge. The challenge card has to match the island board which you are located. And then you would follow six steps. Step one, select active dice that you want to use, making sure that you're paying one fruit for each number over your focus level. Step two, roll the dice and a danger die based on the day or round. Step three, resolve the danger die. You would pay for the X if rolled by paying a shell to your shield or losing a die. If you lose a die, it would go back to the general supply. Step four, if you have what you need to complete the challenge, you may complete the challenge now. Step five, if you want to continue the challenge and roll some or all of your dice again, you must also roll the danger die as well, making sure to resolve the danger die, just like step three, every time you roll. And then step six, again, choose to complete or withdraw. If you withdraw, you would gain the traits that you completed on the challenge card, except for the push it trait, which is a dashed circle. Then you would place your dice in the used area on your character board, discard your challenge card, and draw a new one from the deck. If you completed the challenge, you would gain the traits that you completed on that challenge card. And if you completed it with the push it trait, then you would gain that one as well. But you do not have to have the push it to complete the challenge. Then you would place your dice in the used area on your character board. You would tuck the card at the bottom of your character board under the matching location. If this completes a set of all three locations, you would gain two on the champion board. And if this challenge was done at the same location as a judge, you would gain one on the champion board. Fighting a monster. When you choose to go to the fold and fight a monster, you would carry out six steps. Step one, select the dice you wish to use. Keep in mind that all dice are lost at the end of the fight. You would also pay a fruit per dice more than your focus value. Step two, check the monster weakness style and gain a bonus die. You would check the monster's weakness style and check the same style that you have of challenge cards tucked under your character board and then you would gain a bonus die based on that level. If you had zero, you would gain no bonus die. If you had one, you would gain a level one novice, two, level two, three, level three, and then four, level four. Step three, roll the dice and the danger dice. Step four, pay for any X results. Step five, choose to stop or keep rolling dice, making sure that when you re-roll dice, you include the danger die until you wish to stop. Step six, for each matching damage, you will place a hit token on the monster on that particular damage space, and then you will gain the trait on your character board. You would place your dice that you used back in the general supply. 
If it was an armored spot, you'd also gain one on the champion board. If, when placing all of your hit tokens, the monster is defeated, you would remove the card placing the hit tokens next to the fold, which would gain you one point for each hit token next to the fold at the end of the game. Then all players with a hit token would gain the reward, and the person that got the final shot would get the kill bonus. It's good to keep in mind that no hits on a monster would cause you damage if that monster invades the islands. Then turns would continue going around until all the action discs are placed. And then we would move to the night phase. This phase takes eight steps. Step one, monster invasion. You'll roll the monster invasion die. If you roll a one through five, the monster on the inner reef will invade the islands. And if you roll a six through eight, the monster on the fold's edge will invade the island. If you do not have a hit token on the monster, you would suffer the penalty in turn order. Step two, monsters advance. You'd move down the monsters and flip over a new monster. Step three, monster flees. If a monster was on the inner reef, it would flee. And all the hit tokens are placed next to the fold for points at the end of the game. And then any player without hit points would go down one on the champion track. Step four, refresh and upgrade dice. You would choose a number of dice equal to your resilience level and refresh those chosen and upgrade the chosen dice going one level higher based on the dice chart. This dice chart is located on the player reference card and in the rulebook. Step five, collect action discs and characters. Step six, move the judge clockwise to the next arena. So in this case, the judge would move to Lemaire Stadium. Step seven, tournament standings. First place on the champion board would place a hit token on the round leader bonus for that round. And then finally, step eight, advance the round marker. If you move it to round two or round four, you would change the danger die and gain an action disc. Then days or rounds will continue until the end of day four of the tournament or round four. And then we would go into the final scoring. The final scoring takes seven steps. These are located on the score pad. Step one, score challenges. You will total the points from your character cards that have been tucked under your character board. The points are located in the bottom right corner. Step two, Trait Discs. You're going to score the highest victory point reached on each of the trait discs on your character board. Step three, Champion Board Rank. You're going to score three, two, or one based on your rank, first, second, or third, on the Champion Board track. Ties are split, rounding down. Step four, Champion Board Advancement. You're going to score points based on your location on the Champion Board. You would score one, two, four, six, eight, or ten based on your location that you have passed. Keep in mind that only one person can get 10. Step five, champion board leader bonus. Score one point per hit token for the early round leaders on the champion board. Step six, secret goals. You're gonna score points for completing your secret goals located on your secret goal card. Step seven, score hit tokens. You will place the current monster's hit tokens in the pile of hit tokens next to the fold and then players will get one point per hit token next to the fold. You will total your number of points and the player with the most points is the new champion and leader of the Tidal Blades and wins Tidal Blades Heroes of the Reef. Let's look at the Angler's Cove expansion. This expansion comes with a fifth player and all of the components needed for five players. So more dice, shells, and fruit. A new island comes in this expansion as well, Angler's Cove. Angler's Cove is a place where dark deeds happen in the islands of Naviri. So the actions on this island board are very powerful and the island's bonus effect is to draw an outcast token, and you may attempt any challenge that you have. Also in this expansion, you have market cards, monsters, stunts, and challenges that deal with outcast tokens. These may require you to draw another outcast token or discard outcast token. When it comes to outcast tokens, at the end of the game, the outcast tokens are revealed and the player that has the highest total number located on their outcast tokens will lose five points. If any of those outcast tokens revealed show a minus one, then you would total how many minus ones are revealed, and that's how much each outcast token would cost each of our players. So if two minus ones were revealed and someone had three outcast tokens, they would lose six points at the end of the game. 